לעשות פה, אני רוצה להגיד קודם כל הרבה תודה לספונסר של העמותה, ל-IBM, לאקסלרטור IBM אלפאזון. תודה לטנטיס שסיפקו אותנו פה באוכל. וכל מי שטרח, היו הרבה אנשים שטרחו פה שהאירוע הזה התקיים, לדמי ולאוסטרן שרדי בעצם האירוע הזה זה בחסות העמותה של בוגרי אופק, אופק עמותה שבעצם העמותה הזאת היא של יחידת המדינה של חיל האוויר, אופק 180 מהודס, זה בעצם מערך התוכנה של חיל האוויר, אלה הבוגרים שלנו שיעצרו עוד רגע, אז אני רוצה להזמין שניים שיבואו עוד רגע לעצור, קודם כל את דני בן ארי, co-founder, the VPRD של פאנורייז אסנת ברמן, שהיא ראש מחלקת מוצר בלקוד. אנחנו הולכים להדליק את המקום פה. תשתתפו, תשאלו שאלות, הזמן הזה הוא בעיקר בשבילכם. ותנו לנו פידבקים אחרי זה, שנשמח מאוד. ותסלמו. ביי. So I'll switch right now to English. Also, I will present Noah Fanto from IBM. He will be presenting the IBM Accelerator, AlphaZone. And because it like, came as a surprise, basically we started off talking about like, having the talks here in Hebrew. And I'm sorry for all of the English speakers. I will be speaking in English, the first uh, lecture. And Vosnat and Noah will be in Hebrew. So afterwards, the last lecture also will be in English. So stay tuned. Okay? Does anybody have a problem with English in general? Muscle. <laughs> okay. Then I'll try to be as slow as possible. Okay. So um, when we started off, first of all, like we're doing during the DLD, the innovation. Uh, and uh, you know, entrepreneurship and tech conference here in Tel Aviv right now. And there are, I think, like 28 meetups going on right now. Uh, it's really amazing to see a lot of people from all around the world coming here. And um, we will talk about entrepreneurship and tech, okay? And uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship, everybody is, are talking about Israel as the startup nation. So we're going to be talking about startups. Mostly Israelis. Mostly Israelis, yeah. I do agree. Cocky Israeli. And, and we'll start off talking about all the phases, basically, of a startup company. Okay, and what it actually means to found a startup company, and what tools do we need to actually implement all of these tools. So what I wanted to do is found a startup company. Right. Uh, everybody. There's a lot of software engineering. Development, creating things and building products. Their goal is to create the next startup company that they will sell to maybe a big corporation or maybe do an IPO. And I'll do a really short presentation on me. Uh, I was in uh, OFEC for eight years almost. I uh, did lots of uh, things. Uh, basically, I developed a missile defense system. I was a, a software engineer, a team leader, and afterwards a senior engineer. Um, after I left the military, I started working in a company called Windward. Uh, basically, what I did with missiles in the military, I did with ships when I left the military. And uh, I also am an organizer of developer communities. One big thing focused on big data, data science and DevOps, the other GBG Cloud. Yes, focus the cloud service providers. And uh, I'm also a Google developer expert. Basically, that means that Google uh, certified me that I talk a lot. Okay, so if you don't stop me, I will continue on talking. Okay, some important things. What I'm not, a startup expert. Okay, and what you won't be after this talk and this evening, startup experts. Uh, what you will be afterwards, have your people because I've stopped talking, and all of us stop talking and we'll be. And you will know a bit about basics about startup companies, fundraising, all that means in the matter of technology with startups. 
and also building company culture. And the mini go box. And what do we do with panorates? I will really try to do that as brief as possible. We're helping large enterprises to manage the cybersecurity risk that is imposed by their suppliers. If you go back 20 years ago, CISO, Chief Information Security Officers, used to say that they spent millions of dollars on cybersecurity and they're a safe silo. Okay, this is not enough nowadays because you're using a lot of external services. You're using cloud service providers, emailing services, marketing, CRM, ERPs, interconnected things. And you don't know what's going on with their own cybersecurity posture. And a lot of times people like to take, for example, target team of uh, Lockheed Martin that were breached by their third parties. But we used to uh, take, for example, P9 Media, which is a terminal service of pictures, okay, that used to be in all of these big retailers. And basically, when hackers went on to them to the weakest link in the chain, they hacked all the large enterprises. And you can talk about like different kind of IT vendors, but not only IT vendors. What about your law firm? Your accounting companies, okay? All the financial services that you use. One customer actually told us about their flower delivery company. We're like, why does that mean anything at all? And they say that they have a list of all of their high ranking employees, all of their most valuable customers with their names, addresses, and phone numbers, in which we actually assemble passwords on them, okay? So every supplier might be interested. And how do we do that? We do that in the hacker's point of view. With cameras, with a click of a button, you get full transparency on the security posture of, of all of your suppliers. We're doing everything in the 360 perimeter view and the hacker's point of view, doing dynamic ratings without the need of installation with any party. Not our customer and not the supplier. That's basically it, okay? The, I think, minute and a half pitch. Okay, startups. How many of you are working in startup companies right now? Wow. Not too many. Okay. How many want to work in startup companies or want to found in a startup company? You will learn nothing today. Trust me. Um, so, a lot of times people like to take an example of Silicon Valley. Okay? And it's funny, it's humoristic. And you would think, wow, does that actually work that way? Yes. Okay. A lot of things really work that way. Okay? And you might think that things go as patterns that I do and then, but no. A lot of things are pretty weird in the world of startup companies and generally in business. So, uh, of course, because you're all like scientific people and smart people, let's take something scientific for you. Yeah. And let's define a startup. Okay. What is a startup? Entrepreneurial venture. Okay. This is the important thing which newly emerges with ventures, blah, 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 something, and it hits some kind of medium. This is the important thing. And, of course, because we know the startup companies are dangerous, right? Then basically they have high rates of failure. This is like the general definition of startup companies. Somebody wants to define it elsewise? I'll choose a big one. The start is uh, a group of people trying to uh, make a series of experiments to find a sustainable business model. Awesome. Okay. A group of people trying to do some kind of experience, uh, experiments to do uh, to create some kind of business model and to solve a problem. I'm adding to that. I'm done with people's money. What about the battle? <laughs> what about the battle? Okay, so let's talk about sectors, okay, because like we're the startup nation, we have a lot of sectors in the world of companies in general, okay, cybersecurity, fintech, edtech, medtech, clean tech, okay, automotive industry, developer tools, fun, fun facts, we're a crappy audience to sell to, really. And new media, gaming, e-commerce, esports, etc., etc., etc. We have all sorts of companies out of this variety of fields that we want to actually address. But everything starts from an idea, right? Somebody has the next groundbreaking idea for the next startup company, the next unicorn here. Come on, somebody has to raise his hand. But again, yeah, everything starts. Hmm? Ah, there's a hand. And everything starts out from a problem, okay? And everything should start off from a problem. Because if we're not solving problems, okay, and we're just trying to make money. A lot of things will break in the way. Okay? This is not a secret. But 
to solve a good problem and a hard problem and to do some good to mankind or to your pocket. Basically, you need good partners, okay? Good startup founders. I'm really sorry that all of the not funny memes are not shown really well, but I think that you can see it really good, right? You can't see it. You can't see it. Okay. So, I will ask the question uh, for people who work in the industry right now. How long does it take to actually have an employee, a regular employee, a software developer, on board the company from the moment that you actually approach him, okay, until he is hired. Four months. Okay, one month. How much? Four months. Two months. Four months. Okay, two months. Yeah. The average usually is around two months. Okay. Why? Because it really depends if it's a large corporation, what kind of like interview process we're doing, etc. It can happen in two days because I know I'm from the military. Come on, on board, and that's it, right? How long does it take? find founders, like co-founders? Yeah, a lifetime. A lifetime. Good answer, okay? But usually what I hear from entrepreneurs is it takes like, yeah, I met them at a meetup uh, two weeks ago, and we're uh, kind of signing a founder's contract, and we're moving forward. And I'm like, really, literally, you met him two weeks ago, and you're kind of like getting married right now? <laughs> How can that be, okay? So really, this is amazing to see the division between like common sense, which takes interviewing process, I want to evaluate him, etc., and when I need to find found some kind of like startup company or idea that I want to like I don't know some kind of achievement that I want to conquer, it's like two weeks. Okay, so think about it. These are the people that will fight in the trenches with you. Okay, these are the people that you will actually like tell about all of your problems during this journey because this will be a journey okay you better enjoy the journey and of course after i found my best partners that i know lifetime what do i need to do it's really guys come on <laughs> somebody say fundraising right i need to raise money i need to raise five million dollars to achieve my goal right <laughs> my presentation <laughs> Yeah? Sounds legit? Okay. B2B, B2C. Yeah, but again, I, I, won't, I won't go for the industries and everything, but again, you have a lot of options, okay? And you need to think about the possibilities of how do you fundraise and why do you fundraise, okay? Think of it. And there is a large difference between that, that you will be a first time entrepreneur or the whole team. Is their, it's their first venture, or you have like really vast experience in the matter of building companies and building products, etc. And you have lots of possibilities. Venture capitals, VCs, like raising money only from VCs is not the only option, okay? And raising a lot of money is not always the best way to go. You have a lot of times angel investors, okay? Somebody can tell me like what, what might be the, um, I don't know, the good thing about taking money from angel investors and not VCs? <coughs> Faster. Faster, right, totally. They, they saw your product and they believe it. Okay, 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 you, you have to repeat that. They? They already believe in the product. Okay. You don't need to all over again. Uh, okay. He says that they believe in the product. A lot of times, yes, they kind of share your dream, but not always. They might be door openers. Okay, this is the important thing to take into account because he is somebody from the industry. He understands your business. He can open doors, and you can actually like add something to your product, right? And again, fast money. Okay, it's not a long process of uh, due diligence. <laughs> this is important. Also, you have accelerators. How many of you know accelerators here in Israel, for example? Four names. Microsoft. Microsoft Accelerator. IBM. IBM. The Junction. The Junction. Okay, what is the difference between IBM, Microsoft, and the Junction? The Junction is uh, just an accelerator, and IBM is uh, like a corporate. Uh, exactly. The difference between a corporate accelerator and a regular accelerator that sets some kind of like concept, maybe, and 
sometimes corporate accelerators choose not to invest money in the company, but resources, right? No, I will elaborate on that. But uh, regular accelerators want to like widespread their startup companies, okay? They want to take them and go like meet their customers. Something that is in some kind of vertical, maybe a charted, maybe fintech, okay? Because it's by a bank. And of course, FFF, okay? Friends, family, and fools. Because a lot of times you might fool people to give you money. Of course, there is always the option of taking your life savings, because you have lifetime founders, right? And invest all that you have in your own sort of Sometimes it will be the best thing that you did in your life, sometimes it will be the worst thing that you did in your life. It really depends on your own personality, okay? Because if you can't detach yourself from the business, then you will be always emotional about everything, okay? Spending $20 a month would be painful. So think about it. There is another option. There is another option also. The innovation of funding. Yeah, but I, I take that as a... Grants. <coughs> grants, I, I totally agree. I put that in my mind with accelerators and like kind of... I know, I know, it's like a loan. It's like a loan, but it gives you a lot of like back trail. No, no, it gives it when you want to sell uh, your company to an American entity, it might cost more. <laughs> Okay, so think about this. Awesome. So again, there are different kinds of stages in a company, right? And Noah mentioned also bootstrapping. Bootstrapping means that I start off from day one with nothing. Okay? And maybe even my product actually can generate revenue from day one. And this is amazing, right? And I can cover my expenses, I can cover my cost of living and everything. And this is great. Everybody would like to invest in that. So what do you do when you're generating revenue? <laughs> Nothing? Generate more revenue. Throw all of the money that you're actually earning in your startup company to grow, right? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I, I actually expected, okay, I want to raise $5 billion because I'm generating revenue. Awesome. So we have stages also. Pre-seed. Pre-seed means that basically you're sitting in your parents' garage with boxers and coding. I don't know, something, okay? Three entrepreneurs somewhere thrown. Usually you're creating some kind of MVP, some kind of like small product to meet the market. And then you can bootstrap and actually generate revenue. Awesome. The seed stage. Basically, a lot of times you will want to raise money to create some kind of product, the right product that meets the market, meets a problem, but you actually want to validate that, iterate over that. Okay, and kind of conquer a local market. Afterwards, you would like to grow, right? Then you will raise your A round. I want to go to the United States. I have an awesome like product, really built here in Israel. I conquered like an astonishing 60% of the market, and then I want to go abroad. And of course, after growth, you have B round, C, D, etc., etc. When you actually want to achieve more and more achievements. Okay, so in that fundraising process, which might be really, really tedious, okay, because you need to do a lot of due diligence, you need to meet a lot of investors. Do you raise money from investors in Israel or abroad? Okay, uh, it, it, will it be Japan, China, United States, maybe somebody from Europe? Interesting. But everything meets these criteria, okay? Product maturity. Is my product mature to the market and the problem that I'm trying to solve? This is a real important thing that you need to take into account. And of course, the holy grail, I want to do an exit, right? No. Yes? No. 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 It really depends on you, okay? What are your goals? What do you want to actually achieve? Maybe you want to do a quick exit. Maybe you want, you want to take your uh, company public, do an IPO. And of course, you can start you talking about it. it. What? You might just own it. Again, of course. Privately owned. Privately owned company that generates money. There are companies that are literally printing money. Okay? It might be more beneficial than actually taking it public. Taking it public is really a pain in the ass. And of course, you start talking with all of the like the high grade things of stocks and options that the companies are like giving us, right? Even when you're joining a really large corporation, Microsoft, Google, IBM, I don't know, whatever, they give you grants. Every year, if you're performing well, they basically give you more stock options. Uh, not stock options, I'm sorry, options, like actual shares of the company. 
And of course, you have all of the things, vesting, cliff, all the terms that I explained to you afterwards. But I want to take that dilution part, okay? Is dilution a good thing? Yes. Dilute. Yes, yes. Not to the people who work in the startup. Yes. So sometimes uh, dilution, <coughs> sometimes dilution can be a great idea, but uh, it happens. It's not a, yes. But it just there is times it, it is the worst idea ever. Okay. Like uh, it is. I, I, I will stop you because it's not an idea. It just happens. When you do fundraising, you get diluted. Period. Okay. Why? Because somebody is entering more money to the company and gets shares. So yet you get diluted with the percentage. Simplified. Okay. That's it. But if you are doing an up round, okay, and somebody actually like overvaluated your company, it's good for you. You're getting diluted in the amount of percentage that you have in the company. But every share that you hold costs more. Okay, and you can sell it more, right? It's a good thing, right? Yes. Who do you sell to? No one. Exactly, no. Okay, this is the important thing to take in mind. Until you make some kind of exit, IPO, or somebody said, like buys the company, acquires it, you make nothing. Okay, so because of that, I am a startup founder, I'm giving stock options. I really believe in my own company. I really believe in what we're doing. I need to take into account that this is the risk that you're taking when you're going to a startup. Okay? You, it might be super beneficial for you, but it might not. People start talking about stock options, if somebody wants to ask me questions, awesome. If I know the answer, I will answer. If not, I will like one thing with full confidence. Oh. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, I want to <coughs> conclude. Think about the problem that you're trying to solve with every startup or every idea that you have. A startup company or any problem that you're trying to solve might not generate value, like revenue for your pocket, but it might give you something, it might solve something, it might give you the excellent result, basically, that you will take your next idea to the next level, okay, with other founders other people with the same founders. I know teams of four and five people or three people that took a startup company after startup company. Their first exit was really, really small because they're like, where are actually hired. And afterwards they left as a team and, and then got acquired by a different kind of company and did many iterations because, as I said, it's a journey. Okay? And you need to take an account, you need to learn from that journey, and you need to enjoy this journey. Because if not, basically we will drop out. Okay? You know, like, can somebody tell me two main reasons why startup companies fail? Cash flow. Okay, cash flow is one. Well, market? Okay. Entrepreneur. Interest. Competition. Fight between the entrepreneurs. The two main reasons why startup companies die, okay? Money ran out, okay? Or the entrepreneurs fought, did some kind of like bad things to each other or bad things to the startup company got into a, to a situation which is like super not going back from and that's it. Okay? Not product, not market. Why? Because you pivot a lot. Okay? You move, you change accordingly. And if you don't change, you fight, and you go. What? Find a product, yeah, yeah, but you need to adjust yourself as a company also. I, I know of a lot of startup companies that grew, grew, grew up to a certain market cap, found out that their market is dead because Google had closed some kind of like the API or whatever that they relied on, downscaled the company to five employees, okay, and grew it up again. Also, they didn't close the company, they kind of pivoted it to a different kind of place. I have, right? Okay. The who you are trying to solve it with, founders. It's super important. I enjoy every day with my two co-founders, okay? And I enjoy sharing all of the thoughts and all the problems that we have. Basically, think of it that if a startup company uh, doesn't succeed, then you ain't shit for a year, okay? If a startup company succeeds, 
we just need shit for a longer period of time. Okay, this is a simple thing. And by that, you need to take into account that the people that you are taking on the journey with you, this is one of the important things. And when I mean people, it's not all the founders. It's all of the other people that you kind of hire afterwards. And prioritize everything. And move fast. Okay, because one of the most important things is time. Your own time. Okay, take the deal. Try enjoying the ride because if you don't enjoy it really, then basically you're trying to be something that you're not. And of course, because we're in Israel, okay, Mishat Achi Achi, connections. You need connections. If it's to customers, if it's to money, a lot of times what the VC and investors will bring you is connections. But you need to take an account that nobody is like really, really, can you say that, innocent, okay? and generous, okay? Everybody has motives. And you need to take into account all the motives of other kind of people. Okay, I won't go into questions because we have other lectures and I don't want to bore you. And we'll continue on to the next uh, presentation. And if you'd like, we can have a kind of brainstorming afterwards if somebody wants. We would really love to share from our experience, okay? Awesome, so let's